Most people are likely aware that there's a lot of science fiction subgenres, but some people may not know that certain subgenres have derivatives themselves. Cyberpunk, for example, has plenty, and some of them may be the subjects of future videos. But today we'll be focusing on one that's commonly thought of as being a cyberpunk derivative, steampunk. Before we get to the meat of the video, let's talk about steampunk itself a little bit. Much like cyberpunk, steampunk is also surprisingly old, whereas cyberpunk has its roots beside science fiction in things like film noir, the hard-boiled detective, etc. Steampunk was influenced by 19th century science fiction, namely the works of Jules Verne, H.G. Wells and a few others. Unfortunately for the genre, steampunk never had its own Blade Runner, nor Blade Runner moment, which means it's still lacking a far-reaching popularity when compared to cyberpunk. Another thing that seems to prevent steampunk from picking up steam is a big lack of definition. Let me tell you what I mean by that by comparing steampunk and cyberpunk. Cyberpunk has very well-defined elements. You know that there'll be stuff on transhumanism, on being ruled by corporations, and that there'll be a hacker somewhere, usually as the protagonist. Steampunk is a lot looser, and it's no wonder that it's often hard to recognize something as truly steampunk. Still, we can identify a few common tropes that are usually key to the genre. We can start by the prevalence of steam technology. Steampunk presents a retro-futuristic setting where humanity has not progressed from steam-based technology. Also, cogs. Steampunk isn't exactly tied to a period in history, but it usually is from a cultural perspective. Victorian-era class and economic structures are regulars in steampunk. Lastly, and this is a funny one, steampunk is usually not that dark. The hero is often venturous, and there's a less morally ambiguous system than in cyberpunk with its anti-heroes and dystopic setting. Besides these, there are other things that are fairly common and that expand on steampunk. After all, steampunk has plenty of derivatives itself, some more famous, some less so, but that too is a topic for another video. So, what about steampunk in gaming? Let's get one thing out of the way first. There is no AAA super famous successful, let's call it pure steampunk game. There are a few games that are predominantly about steampunk and then a lot of games that have many references to it. Starting with the 90s, the Chaos Engine and its sequel were some of the earliest steampunk games. There are a couple of other games like Myst and its sequel, but I'd say a bigger reference of the 90s is Thief, the Dark Project. You play as Garrett, who is, surprise surprise, a thief, who must stop the trickster from bringing chaos to the world. Thief was also a pioneer of the stealth genre, being the first game to use light and sound as game mechanics. As a side note, 1998 was a pretty big year for stealth games, with other classics like Tenchu and Metal Gear Solid. Going back to Thief, remember how it can be tough to classify something as steampunk? Well. Thief isn't exactly steampunk. In fact, it's one of the earliest examples of one of its derivatives, a genre called Gaslamp Fantasy. It isn't set in the Victorian era, nor is there much of an emphasis on steam. Still, it's one of the better known steampunk games of this period, with most references coming from the occasional anachronistic tool you find along the way. Thief 2, launching two years later in 2000, would expand on the steampunk elements and is regarded as one of the best steampunk-ish games to this day. The 2000s began rather well for steampunk. Besides Thief 2, Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura is another significant game of the time. It was the first project by Trike Games, the guys who made Fallout, and the resemblance is evident, with Arcanum being an RPG with an isometric perspective and having a similar gameplay. In Arcanum, there's this ever-present dichotomy of magic versus technology, down to the character you play as. 
You can be either a traditional spellcaster, an experienced engineer, or a combination of both. The story follows the player as he searches for the origin of a ring and the decisions he takes at various points in the game build the plot in different directions. Even so, there's still the central goal pushing the plot forward as you navigate the magic tech conflict. Like Tiff though, Arcanum is yet another example of cast lamp fantasy and not of traditional steampunk. Other notable games of this decade include Skies of Arcadia, focusing on airships and sky pirates, and Siberia whose towns are very steampunk inspired. And finally, the 2010s. The past decade had the highest profile games so far, particularly Bioshock Infinite. You play as Booker DeWitt, who is offered the final chance to clear his depths by going to Columbia to capture a girl called Elizabeth. The catch? <laughs> Columbia is a steampunk floating city that became independent from the United States after going rogue. In more than one way, Bioshock Infinite is used as a deconstruction of steampunk. Besides the abundance of steampunk's artistic tropes, the game didn't shy away from looking at the punk side of steampunk. Columbia society is based on the Edwardian era, a common steampunk setting. Several of the genre's conventions are taken to their logical conclusion, such as American exceptionalism, religious fundamentalism, and the depiction of racism as normal to the time period. This all ties into a well-crafted package about self-loathing, free will, and hope. This decade also saw other notable games in the genre, SteamWorld Dig, Dishonored, and the more recent Frostpunk to name a few. Where does the genre stand now? As said in the beginning, it still hasn't had a bestseller, but it is gaining popularity and upcoming games like Firmament, Vulcanoids and Iron Harvest are keeping it alive. Who knows, we may hear about that blockbuster sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, you may want to check the previous video on Cyberpunk. You can also join me on Twitch slash RDTest. I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. Links are in the description. See you in the next video everyone.